morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to our work session for November 1st. And the public may join us through the Zoom system. The uh, phone number, meeting ID, and passcode are on our website and also on our agenda today. Uh, first order of business, Chief Clerk of the Dietrich, or any executive session itself? We're done, Paul. Okay, thank you. And before we start public comment, Susan Smith is here from our engineering department. She has to make a presentation and, and uh, part of the procedure for her mitigation plan. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, as you know, the Planning Office, Emergency Management Agency, and the Conservation District are working jointly on an update to the County Hazard Mitigation Plan. The Hazard Mitigation Plan is the county's commitment to reducing risk from hazards such as flooding, winter storms, dam failures, hazardous materials incidents, and droughts, to name a few. It will be our strategy to prevent loss of life, minimize or avoid property damage to homes and businesses, reduce business interruption and revenue loss, reduce emergency response and recovery costs, and build a sense of place and peace of mind. This is a multi-jurisdictional plan and all 67 municipalities along with other agencies were invited to participate. As part of this plan update, we will be hosting a virtual public meeting, community engagement during the hazard mitigation planning process offers <coughs> a venue for school County residents, stakeholders, and the public to voice concerns and guide decisions as we prepare this update. The virtual public meeting will be the first of a number of opportunities for the public to provide input and comment. The virtual meeting will be held via Zoom on Tuesday, November 14th at 5.30 p.m. Information on how to join the meeting can be found on the county's website in the meeting calendar or on the Schuylkill County Planning and Zoning Facebook page. Those interested in participating may also call the planning office at 570-628-1415 for the meeting information. I've also left flyers in the room here today. On behalf of the Planning Office, Emergency Management Agency, and Conservation District, I would like to encourage the public to attend and help us build a plan to create a safer, more disaster resilient school county. Thank you for your time. Susan, just thank you. I know. And just to point out, you've been working on this for how long? This is the planning on this has been ongoing for quite a few months. Uh, Commissioner, we started in the late spring of this right. year, and um, we'll conclude about the same time next year. Um, then the plan will need to go to FEMA, who will review it, and then the plan will need to go to FEMA, who will do an approval. Um, also, any municipality that participates will have to pass a resolution adopting the plan, and then we'll roll into annual updates. And can you just let the public know how long the plan is good for how long after this plan is going to take effect for how many years? Yeah, the plan has a five-year life, but we have to start updating before the plan expires. Great, thank you so much. Also add that I know you worked hard, but not you know, had the world's best response from municipalities. I know we, we, you've reached out, we've reached out. Some have been good, some have pretty yeah. still, still haven't participated yet, right? Yeah, we, we've worked pretty hard to get the municipalities to be engaged, and um, our numbers have gone up, so um, we're seeing a bit of a turn um, with our participation levels, but that's just going to be a and your, your board includes supervisors? Uh... So there's a core planning team or a steering committee, and that steering committee includes representatives from uh, FEMA calls and community lifelines, so um, fire, police, EMS, um, the Water Authority at the Swivel Municipal, SEDCO, uh, township supervisors, borough council members, um, those who um, represent the disadvantaged population within the school book, within school book time, so the school book United Way organization. This has been a lot of people put a lot of time effort into this. Thank you for your help. I will say the emphasis on the municipalities, if they don't sign on it, there's a possibility that there is an emergency or whatever they might have, that they might not get the funding. Uh, it is a big part of it. It takes a, a longer trail if they're not signing on it. That's right. right. If, when they participate um, and approve the plan, they then become eligible for um, mitigation funding through FEMA. They become more competitive for other types of grant funding, um, and they also the um, their their bond rating can improve. There's some of the advantages to participating. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Susan? I don't want to thank you very much for your presentation. Next up, we have public comment. Anyone like to give public comment today? Uh, 
morning, freshmen. Good morning. My name is George Stanovich from Palo Alto. Uh, now is the time for the West End uh, of Pennsylvania. We heard this lady talking. Please make sure your uh, borough, or township, whatever, is talking to these people so you get that help. And now I'm going to say about the senior citizen veterans once again. I'm tired of saying this, but one thing I've noticed since I've been talking, and I hope some senior citizens and veterans start coming to these meetings, mm -hmm. is that I got a, a lot of people yes. that know me now that never knew me because I'm speaking up about senior citizens and veterans. And I think if everybody gets on board, this is going to get straightened out. If you just say, oh, the, they're not going to do anything, that's right, right. They're not going to do anything. It's time to put a little pressure on these guys so that they help these senior citizens and veterans. I'm tired of seeing people losing their home. This reassessment, I don't care what they say, is going to drive our taxes up. I don't care what they say. If my taxes go up. I already told Senator Argo, you know, be ready because if I lose my home, I'm coming to live with you first. I'm coming to live with you, and you won't want who I'm dragging with me. Because she'll be twice as hard as I'll ever be. I'm tired of this nonsense. I'm tired of it. It's just going on and on. Next week, people have a voice. If these people aren't doing the job, let's get some people that are, and not just these guys, all over the United States, in our state especially, in our county. We need help, people need help. They're out there hungry, losing their homes. I don't know how I have to stress this point any further than I have all this year and a half that I've been talking about. I'm tired of hearing excuses, or I don't have this, or I can't do that. Well, speak up. You're our voice. These people are our voice out there, and they have to speak up on these subjects. And if they don't, then get rid of them and get somebody in there that's going to speak up for us. Now it's time for a change, and the change happened yesterday, not today or tomorrow. Let's get on board, and I hope you citizens out there that are voting are going to put the right people in, that are going to help us and help, especially the seniors and the veterans that need the help. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to give public comment? Good morning, Laura. Good morning. <coughs> My name is Laura Kuzanowski. I live in the city of Pottsville. Probably going to trigger <laughs> Mia Yandorski, who's running for commission, because I'm going to talk about Pottsville. <clears throat> we passed laws allegedly for the health, safety, and welfare of the people. The 14th Amendment says that we're all entitled to equal protection under the law, but we don't see that happen in this room or out on the streets of the city of Pottsville. What we have in Pottsville is unequal protection under the law. In Pottsville, the city business manager's job is to be, uh, oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the city, which includes zoning laws, codes enforcement, and, and all of the, the streets departments and all of the other departments. Everything is done but that job according to the code. <clears throat> Currently, the people need to know that Pottsville's police force, which was once 40 strong, is now 20, and we will be losing probably two more police officers within uh, this year and probably five more next year. That is a very dangerous situation. The people of Pottsville pay to train the police officers who, after they have been trained, leave to work in Frackville or go to Penn State because they are treated better. The current situation in Pottsville is that City Hall is in lockdown and it has been in lockdown. If you want to go into that building, you need to sign in and someone needs to escort you to the office that you need to go to and to escort you to the door because government is no longer by the people, for the people, or of the people. It is for the employees, by the employees, and of the employees. Because the law was passed, or the ordinance was passed, 
for the protection of the employees, none of whom, like anybody in this building, have ever been assaulted. But anyway, <clears throat> um, along with that, we have issues of um, health, safety, and welfare, where again, if you want to see a city that's well run in Schuylkill County, you need to go to Tamaqua. Tamaqua has uh, basically turned itself around. It's a nice model for this county on how to change things. Jonathan Morris, who's running for city controller, has all throughout the course of the summer brought in um, far, like a farmer's market. Most every single vendor who came into Pottsville to sell their wares, their, their groceries and their, their produce was from Tamaqua. I think we need to take a really good look at how Tamaqua is turning itself around. That's an extremely important thing. The other cities that are, uh, areas that are well run are Wilkesburg and, um, well, Wilkesburg and it's, I'm losing it at the moment because I didn't think about that. But anyway, there is hope. And um, yes, I concur with George. And I also want to thank Mr. Dunkel, who last week pointed out that, um, <laughs> what was it, Mr. Dunkel? Anyway, but the other thing is, why is this cordoned off? <coughs> yes, but why is that cordoned off? We have a right to know why that's cordoned off. Are you trying to keep Jeff from? No, having? because pe people were taking pictures of the information in front of them. So. There was someone took photographs of Linda's, Linda's paperwork. So. Someone took a photograph? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, is that illegal? I'll, we'll talk, I'll talk to you after. <laughs> <laughs> Behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. Behind closed doors. No, that's wrong. Sorry. Thank you. Anyone else want to give public comment? <laughs> Jeff Dunkel, Palo Alto. Start real quick. I'm glad to see your campaign finance report was finally filed with Larry, even though it was late again. The odd thing is everybody else gets time stamped. I'm sure Craig and Mary Jo can confirm that. Rita, yours is handwritten. And it was only filed yesterday, but it says October 26th. Uh, maybe we can look into that a little further, but I got bigger fish to fry. 911 Center, Mr. Craters here. From what I understand, 22 overtime shifts last week, 18 so far this week. He was here last week, but he, I guess he got a phone call. He left before. Uh, the representative from AFSCME got up. This whole county is in crisis mode between senior services, double the caseload. The sheriff here, he can confirm he's down to five or six deputies. You stated a couple meetings ago, public safety is your number one priority for the county. And you dropped the ball big time there. So now we're gonna pay for a recruitment thing for HR. If you're not gonna increase the wages and give these people a fair shot at paying their bills, they're not gonna stay here. It's a joke. Also last week, George asked for <coughs> parcels. I gave him the information. I emailed. I confirmed he got it. I got three more parcels again this week. Be nice if you just look into them and let me know why Deb Dash is making all these backdoor deals. So I'll give you those, George, after the meeting, and if you could add them to the list, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Doc Moylan's here today. We're going to buy an eighty thousand dollar used CAT scan system from California. I hope there's a warranty on it. It's nice to see you in the building for the first time since you've been elected as well. At least you know where it's at now. And uh, the main thing, since we have this screen up here, is there a way that we can get the, there was a letter sent to the county or the commissioners regarding George violating the consent decree. I'd like to know why that wasn't put on the agenda since it was sent, and why your dicta dictator like ways keeps it off the agenda. That's something the public should know. If there's a fear for public safety because of him being in the building, write that down, George, fear of public safety. That should be brought up at a meeting and should be on the agenda. But like you say, it's my meeting, I'll run it the way I want, I'll put it on the agenda what I want. So I'm asking you, why is that not on the agenda? I would like the agenda reopened and that put on there and the public know what the letter was that was sent. Next week's election time, of course last week, oh, they nailed it, nailed it out of the park. Two years those people have coming from the West End. You know, many of them are retired on fixed income, wasting their gas, wasting their time coming here. And all they got from you was a lousy thank you for your comments. And now all of a sudden you and Larry want to put a letter together. Really? Can you tell it's election time? That was the biggest political BS that I've ever seen. So now I'm asking you 
Why is the consent decree letter not made public? If it came from the sheriff, he's here. If it came from Mike Opaque, he's here. If it came from Gary Bender, he's here. I'd like to know why it wasn't made public and why he refused to put it on the agenda. Let the public know. Are you awake? Are you just daydreaming? Yes, sir, I'm awake. Okay, I'm going to reply with your strawberry bar in your mind. Time's up? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your response, Mr. Hetherington. Mr. Dunkel, can you give Mr. Marshall those papers, please? Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else like to get public comment today? Mr. Lewar, good morning. Guys down there working 60 hours and four days in the past month. Four days. Can you imagine working 60 hours and four days on your farm? How tired you'd be by the fourth day? Those guys are there, they have lives in their hands all day long. They came here last week with their evening guy asking to sit down and talk. Why can't you sit down and talk? You guys, you and George were down there a couple weeks ago with Watcher and Argo walking around getting pictures taken. Did anybody sit there and ask them how, how it's going down there? Did you pull any workers to the side? Probably not. They're pissed off down there. <clears throat> you call in duty at eight o'clock in the morning and you call, you call in later at eight o'clock at night and the same guy's answering the phone. Guess what, he missed his daughter's birthday or his wife's anniversary because they get mandated. There's no help. They came here last week, not for more money for themselves, but to pay more money to new people so they, so they don't have to stay there 16 hours a day. How would you like if you had your anniversary today and you, and you got told at three o'clock you went out for dinner with your wife and at three o'clock or two o'clock you say, sorry boots, you're staying until 11 o'clock tonight. Or you missed your grand granddaughter's dance recital or something. Would you like that? Is it fair to them? You think it's fair? Anybody? You just wanna stare at me? They gotta sit there and answer phones. Major incidents, last week, there's a Four, three vehicle wreck on 209. They had five people there. You think one person could handle that whole thing? So probably at least three of them dispatching helicopters, dispatching fire, dispatching EMS, dispatching police. And then God forbid something else was going on, they had to handle that too. After being there, maybe 16 hours or 12 hours and not being home for three or four days because all they they go home and sleep and get up and go right back to work. Because you guys won't just sit down and talk. Go down and, and call them on the phone, some of the workers, and say, hey, how's it going down there? What, what, do, you, what do you need? There's equipment down there, supposedly, that doesn't, hasn't worked in two years, and they can't even find parts where it's, it's that old. You have the CAD system you guys bought 10 years ago that still isn't, isn't uh, or maybe Scott could talk about it. One of you guys campaigned on it years ago, maybe you, George. Did you have a campaign mailer out years ago that we bought and brought up uh, the 911 center to modern times? Do you remember that? You guys bought a CAD system years ago, remember that? And you do, Gary? Yeah. It still doesn't work. Here today, it says GP, GIS mapping maintenance. Supposedly they can't even get mapping on this thing somehow. I don't know. It's amazing in the world that you could get mapping for anything in seconds, but they can't get that one to work down there. Get them some help. That's what they, they don't want more money, they want help. Your time. My time's up. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Good. Talk to them at least, would you? Because it, it, it affects everybody in here. We, Everybody's we, life. We got you. We heard that. Okay. I know you heard it, but do something about it. Your time's done, sir. I don't care if my time is done. Your time's done. done. Hopefully, in next week, you sit here and lame duck. Hopefully, Mary Jo takes you out. And Greg will you either you stop, Mr. Mr. Lee, while we're happy to escort it out, okay? Please stop. Thank you. Anyone else want to give public comment? Morning, Greg Wolf, School Good morning. Uh, So, again, agenda item number 10. I think I've talked about this almost every week on here. Not being transparent again, we're moving money around. You know it's already budgeted for, but why again can we not release the budget forms? They exist. 
Mr. Uh, Boober tells you guys the explanation is right at the bottom of the form. I'm sure we all sit here like, well, that'd be nice for us to see the form. It'd be great. Why can we not be transparent on where we're moving money around? It's taxpayer money. So, as Mr. Dunkel stated last week, Mr. Huntington, you and Mr. Bedore wrote out that letter firmly stating that you believe that the NSP should be shut down. Well, this week, the county is going to put out a resolution, but it's essentially, we're now strongly objecting. Two private citizens can say, let's shut it down, but the commissioners can't hold the same, same tone in their letter that they're going to relate to their motions they're going to do. Just throwing wet noodles at the wall, hoping it's going to stick. Hoping, hoping in a week we're going to survive and be a commissioner for another four years. I don't care. Win or lose, something needs to be done for those people on the West End. NSP should be shut down. Why can we not have the same strong wording in our resolution? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any else looking for public comment? If not, we'll move on then. Mary Jo. I'll go, okay. Good morning, Mary Jo. Good morning, Mary Jo Moss, West Brunswick. I don't have a lot to say today because we've been pounding the table for weeks and weeks and weeks. We truly need transparency. We truly need leadership. Leadership is being proactive. It's not being reactive to situations. We just keep responding and reacting after all these months and months and months of people coming forward and expressing the needs that they see we need in this county. We need commissioners who are proactive, not reactive. We need to be transparent. We need a whole structure of running these commissioner meetings where we discuss things in public, not behind the scenes. It's required by Sunshine Laws that we discuss and deliberate things that don't have anything to do with contracts or personnel or sensitive issues. We don't discuss. We come here on Wednesdays and we make motions and then we move, we take action. Where is the discussion in public? That is what we need. That is how we get to the core of serving the people. Look at our at the information that we push out. Just. Just uh, a month ago, I'd say, we approved a budget. It, it was an addition to the budget, not moving around funds, but an addition of $250,000 to pay $450 per hour to train our employees for sexual harassment and retaliation. So how's it going? How much have we spent? How much of that budget has been used to date? It's in the 2023 budget now. Why do we have to keep coming and pulling and asking? We need proactivity. We need full transparency. All through our stimulus fund expenditures, that should have been pushed out on the website. Berks County has that. You go on their website and you'll see stimulus fund spending. It says where those stimulus funds have been spent and how much is left. I've been watching people come and ask and ask and ask, pull, pulling teeth. We don't need that. We need to work together. We need to be proactive. We have to be responsive to the, the cries from the employees who feel that they're being retaliated against. That is a consent decree that we have to stand by. It's a legal matter. Yes, Laura, there's hope. Yes, there is hope. I am a very positive person. <coughs> there is hope. And we will make that change. We will certainly make that change and we will take the good people in this county and we will lead and we will move forward. Thank you. Anyone else want to give public comment? Okay, seeing no one else, I'm going to move on to our agenda. We have Scott here from 911. Morning, Mr. Crater. Morning. Morning, Scott. Morning, Mr. One item uh, looking for approval next week to enter into agreement for maintenance uh, with Edgewood's Environmental Research Institute of uh, Redlands, California, for the maintenance on the GIS mapping. Term will be for one year, January 1 to December 31, 2024. The cost will be $14,096. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thanks, Scott. Thanks. While you're up there, Scott, there's been several times about the 911 center, and this is an issue that you have talked to us about. We've been in a lot of consultation about. It's difficult finding people who are looking at recruiting. We're, we're, we are having negotiations about what we can do to solve that, those problems. So we're not turning a blind eye to it, and you're not also. I want to make sure that people understand you are a good leader. You're aware of what's going on. And it's not something you like to have happen, but we're trying our best to correct it, okay? Right, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Jet item number four, we have a uh, block grant program with Sharon Love. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. Good morning, Sharon. Item. <clears throat> a recommendation that the board approves an agreement with the Pottsville Parking Authority. Um, Pottsville for 102 parking permits for the Capitol Parking Garage and 14 parking permits for spaces on the two and a half block of Moore Boulevard at a rate of $41 per permit per month with a contract cap of $57,072 for the period January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Is that an increase or could it stay the same? There is a slight increase that went up the dollar ten per permit. Yeah. Is there, a, these are the only spots that were to go to the Possible Parking Authority that you're aware of? These are for the human services right. agencies, if anybody else is. Okay, there may be additional. There may be there. additional. Okay. These are for the human services. Thank you. Bye. Okay, next up, John Hockall on Lane Chair, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. Carl is going to present yeah. for Elaine. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Carl Robertson from Drug and Alcohol. Um, I am, we are asking for approval of an addendum to Guy Singer Marworth to increase their cap from 7500 to 20500 for fiscal year 23 to 24. So looking for motion for the Guy Singer Marworth increase. <coughs> Moved. Okay. Other question, roll call. Commissioner Hedrington? Yes. Commissioner Halkovich? Yes. And Commissioner Hess? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank Thanks, Carl. Next up, we have Trimmer Youth. I see Mr. Robles here this morning. Good morning, Carl. <coughs> Good morning, Commissioner Hedrington. Good morning, Carl. Carl Rumble, Assistant Administrator, <coughs> School for County Children and Youth. Today we have three agreements uh, to present for consideration. One with request for a motion. Uh, first, we have request for approval of an agreement with Lifespan Family Services of PA, located in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, for foster care services. Their traditional uh, program with code FC is at a per diem rate of $75.48, and that agreement is for the term July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024. We have uh, an agreement with Bear Foundation of Pennsylvania, New Wilmington, for foster care services with per diem rates as follows. Uh, their lower level program, ages 0 to 12, at $77.47. For ages 13 to 21, the per diem rate is $82.75. Their supported foster care program is at $89.06 and their supported young parent program is at $103.34, also for the term July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024. Uh, requesting consideration and agreement with Community Options Incorporated out of Princeton, New Jersey. They offer dually licensed residential and uh, community home for individuals with an intellectual disability or autism services. But those are two different categories of licensing, and they, they, they uh, offer both at the same location. Per diem rate for that service is $791.31, and this agreement is also for the term July 1, 2023, to June 30, 2024. Finally, uh, today we're requesting a motion on agreement with uh, Dr. June Elcock Messo, Media Pediatrics, Wallingford, Pennsylvania, for child abuse pediatrician consultations and associated medical care services at a rate of $250 per hour, and that also is with the term July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024. Okay, so there's a request here for child abuse pediatric, I'm sorry, pediatrician consultation, <coughs> medical health services. Is there a motion for that? So moved. Second. On the question, roll call. Commissioner Hederington? Yes. Commissioner Halkovich? Yes. And Commissioner Hess? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rule. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. 
Next up, we have Office of Senior Services. Deanna is here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm requesting approval of a fee service contract with Office Rose Care, limited of possible for personal care services. The rate is $22.19 per hour, and the contract cap will remain the same at $204,000. Motion is requested. And a, a request for motion for a teacher service contract with Thomas Rose Care of the uh, hospital. So second. On the question, roll call. Mr. Hedrington? Yes. Mr. Halkovich? Yes. Commissioner Hess? Yes. And I was wondering if I could make a comment about the service access management contract that was sure. approved. Sure, that'd be fine. Uh, I just wanted to mention, I think there was a misunderstanding of uh, what was perceived about the contract. Um, it, it, they are in our office to do the fiscal uh, services for the fiscal officer. We also have another person who is going to be moving to another state and uh, their services are needed at this critical time. It's not only in our agency, but other agencies across the state are facing these same issues. So um, that's something I wanted to mention. And Deanna, yeah, that contract is not to exceed that amount. That is correct. So if there is somebody that comes in place during that time, mm -hmm. That could, yes. we, we would, we, we may not need the services of service access and management in the future. That is correct. Great. Um, when you take their two salaries for 2023, it's 126,000 approximately their salary benefits. And for 2024, it would be 132,000. Great. Okay. Thank you. And thank you to your staff for the excellent job. Thanks for the report. We appreciate okay. that. Next up, we have. Uh, Amy O'Brien, Civil Deputy Board Administrator. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of Court Administration for uh, the District Justices. I'm requesting approval of a lease agreement with Cyan Sky Technologies for five replacement copiers for five of our seven district justice offices. The lease would be for a period of 60 months at a rate of $586 per month. That's approximately $117 per copier. These are replacement copiers. Our previous lease was with Frazier and we're now entering into a lease and we're requesting to enter into a lease agreement with Cyan Sky Copiers. Okay, so there's a motion to, re to replace the five copiers for our district magistrate, district justices, and uh, for the, it's a uh, 60 month contract. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. On the question, roll call. Commissioner Hetherington? Yes. Commissioner Halkovich? Yes. And Commissioner Hess? Thank you, Amy. Thank, Thank you. Coming down, Amy. Next up, we have Doc Moreland in the corner of the office. Good morning, Doc. The motion before the Board of Commissioners is to approve the purchase of a UCT scanner that would be used exclusively by the coroner's department to carry out post-mortem CAT scans. <clears throat> at the present time, we've been using uh, my own uh, CAT scanner over at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute. The, the proposed new uh, scan will have improved capabilities. For one thing, <clears throat> the motorized couch uh, will have a weight limit of 500 pounds versus the current uh, weight limit of 300 pounds. So we'll be able to investigate heavier patients without open autopsies. Also, <clears throat> it's a third generation CT scanner that has 16 detectors in it. So the images will be uh, will have higher resolution. Uh, the purchase price is just under $80,000 and that includes installation with a 90 day warranty on it. Uh, in, in comparison, the CAT scanner that we're using at present costs 50,000 and another 20,000 to install it. So in, when you consider 11 year time span, this is the bargain. We have obtained uh, competitive uh, quotations and other scans are well over $100,000. So I, I hope that uh, this will pass muster here and be approved. 
If there's a motion to uh, purchase a uh, CAT scanner from Radiology Chronology of Santa California, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. I have um, some questions. Sure thing, Mr. Hess. Go ahead, sir. Uh, on this now, uh, Don, uh, this is going to be the property of the county. Absolutely. Correct? We will not have any other uses okay. uh, other than post mortem CT scans. And also, also with the purchase of this, this is uh, under your employees are going to be handling. The scans, correct? So there's not going to be we have any two, additional charges. We have two deputies that are actually uh, certified radiographers that are approved by the state to do CAT scans, okay. and they would continue to do that. I, of course, will interpret the CAT scans as part of my salary as county coroner. And I did recently report on uh, our experience with over 2,000 autopsies. Uh, but maybe you could show the textbook. It's the uh, edited, that's one of five volumes edited by uh, Dr. Cyril Wecht, who was a uh, coroner in uh, Pittsburgh. And I revised uh, chapter 28, uh, updating medical imaging in the forensic sciences. So it is published material. And also the, uh, the, the placement and everything that's coming in, all that includes all that, the setup and the and installation, and installation and everything else, the proper installation. And also there's a, a, a small warranty on it, correct? 90 days, so, uh, again, over my 40 years in the field, I found that when you're dealing with linear accelerators, CAT scanners, rather than buy a maintenance contract, you're better off doing time and materials. Mm -hmm. But then, again, I just want to make sure that since the county is buying it, uh, again, all of the uh, the running of the, the, the machine, that uh, there's not going to be incurred any other costs, correct? Should be no other costs. Okay. Dr. Moyle, also, uh, the uh, CAT scans that you're doing, they are being used by uh, Dr. Ross, who's the forensic pathologist that we utilize, and uh, the he finds use in having that information. Am I correct on that? He insists on having a CAT scan. We provide him with a, a disc so that he can review it in the autopsy suite in Dolphin County. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Moyle? Okay. Well, thank you, Doctor, for your, for your presentation. And uh, we I, we do have a motion that we did approve, right? Okay. I'm sorry. The motion is second. Okay. Other question, roll call. Commissioner Hetherington? Yes. Commissioner Halko? Yes. And Commissioner Hess? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Next up, we have our financial director, uh, Paul Hoover. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Paul. Commissioner says, good morning. Uh, this morning, I have five budget adjustments I'd like to present. Uh, each budget adjustment has an explanation on the bottom. We're reallocating budgetary authority between line items within the respective departmental budget, and we are not increasing overall spending. The first one I'd like to present is on behalf of district justices for $489. Next one I'd like to present is also on behalf of district justices for $500. Next one is on behalf of 911 for $810. Next one is on behalf of the district attorney's office for $1,000. The last one I'd like to present is on behalf of the public defender's office for $16,000. Commissioners, uh, what this represents is due to some ongoing uh, trials and hearings, uh, they have incurred some additional expenses with witness fees that they didn't anticipate. Uh, this is their shortfall. They did budget some money, but unfortunately did not budget enough. So uh, they're requesting the transfer so that they can cover some current and anticipated invoices for witness fees. Okay, so we have a five requests for budgetary adjustments for the 2023 budget year. Uh, the first one is for the district courts for $489. The second one is for the district courts for $500. A third for your 911 case at $810. A thousand dollars to the DA's office and sixteen thousand to the public defender's office. Is there a motion to approve these five requests? So moved. Second. On the question, roll call. Commissioner Hetherington. Yes. Commissioner Halko. Yes. And Commissioner Hess. Yes. 
I believe you also have a presentation there with the gentleman from BFM. Uh, uh, Commissioner, that is correct. I'd like to just do a brief introduction. Uh, Jamie Schlesinger is here as a representative from PFM Financial Advisors. Uh, PFM uh, Financial Advisors is a firm uh, that provides financial advisory services to uh, states and local governments, uh, as well as to uh, the healthcare sector, as well as higher education sector. Uh, they have offices not only in the state of Pennsylvania, but they also have offices throughout the United States. Uh, today, Jamie is going to give an update on the county finances as well as talk about the county bond rating. Could you pass that microphone over to us? Sure. Hang on. I'll turn your phone one over. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me today. I'll be relatively brief. Uh, we have presented some information related to. Uh, some credit ratios and peer review tied to Moody's Investor Service. So for the group here, uh, all municipalities that issue debt through public issuance, uh, municipal bonds in this example, uh, have to provide for and have a credit rating done by firms that independently re review the creditworthiness of your local government, county, state, uh, throughout the country. Uh, those companies uh, provide that information through a process that they do when you issue debt, as well as through an annual surveillance that is traditionally done uh, toward the end of the year or kind of post budget. So PFM, as what we do as advisors, is we take the information that is provided by Moody's Investor Service through their uh, database, and we uh, utilize it to review and look at to see how we compare to you versus other credit worthy institutions. So this information that we're talking about today is all from Moody's itself and is being presented as a comparison and discussion on how the process works. Uh, so big picture of uh, the county uses Moody's Investor Service as their credit rating agency. Uh, they've been using them since about 2019. Uh, there are other firms out there that provide credit ratings, including Standard & Poor's and a few others. Most traditionally, in the Commonwealth, it's Moody's and Standard & Poor's. Uh, as uh, mentioned, the county has a AA2 credit rating. And what does that mean? Uh, well, looking at the chart below, there's a green down to a red, which ranges between the type of credits that they offer under their rating process. So many of you may have heard the concept of a AAA, that is like having an 800 or more uh, credit score. Uh, that is the highest you can be. Uh, there are a couple of counties that have that credit rating. Uh, and the next range, which is considered very high grade credit, would fall in the AA2 category. So that is the AA category that this county falls in. Uh, you can see that there are others that fall in the A, down to the BAA, and, and well below uh, down to the C range. Most municipalities uh, in the Commonwealth probably fall on average in the A category. Uh, that is traditional, what we'll see. So being in the level of the AA2 category obviously provides the county uh, strong interest rates when we uh, issue debt publicly, as well as giving you know, additional uh, backing for uh, the, the public to know that things are going, going well here. I wanted to point out that this is the latest credit rating that was completed. Uh, the county uh, issued debt a couple years back. This is some information that was included in the credit rating report prepared by Moody's uh, that uh, affirmed the AA2 credit rating. Uh, we provided both some information that came from that report that uh, tied to strengths and weakness, weaknesses. Uh, in some cases, those are things that are driven by uh, financial information, uh, tax base, uh, fund balances, things like that, as well as uh, information related to uh, population, uh, market values, uh, uh, wealth levels, things like that. Those are the type of things that help drive the credit uh, rating overall. It's not just kind of one number and here you are. Uh, they look at various topics and when we review that process, uh, we, we go over those and answer questions related to those. So just pointing out a few of those things, um, you know, the tax uh, base is 6.3 billion, uh, that puts you within the range uh, nationally in the AA category, which is, which is good. Uh, the liquidity position of the county has been strong. Uh, strong reserves uh, fall within the range 
that falls under this particular uh, ratio and category, uh, as well as modest debt burden. I think that's an important point here. Uh, the, the county in the past has issued uh, publicly issued debt to fund capital projects. Uh, the decisions uh, as they uh, decide when those projects are being done, mostly are done through either a bond or bank loan transaction traditionally. So given uh, the amount that is outstanding, it falls under the uh, concept of modest debt burden under, under those rules. And uh, the, the county ultimately has had a you know, history of strong, strong reserves over the years. So those are the credit strengths that we've seen. Uh, generally speaking, as far as weaknesses in general, that is noted, uh, population is relatively steady, uh, you know, a little bump here and there. Uh, that is, you know, things that you generally cannot control uh, in and out of the, of the county, but those are uh, a point that is noted here as well as uh, comparing you to uh, other industrial type uh, and manufacturing throughout the county. Those are, diversification is something that they consider as well. So those are the type of things that we note and see. Uh, the county, as we went through the process, we talked about the economic development that has occurred in the county uh, through its uh, separate uh, uh, corporation that, that assists with that. Uh, as you continue to keep doing those, we'll note those uh, changes throughout the county in the next conversations. I want to point one thing out, as I mentioned earlier, uh, although the county's last rating was published in 2020, uh, there is annual surveillances that, are, that occur by Moody's as one of their requirements uh, when they are uh, doing that because they need to make sure that things are being done right because they can make changes to the credit rating at any time. It doesn't matter if you're issuing debt or not. So there are some you know, counties that have movements up or down depending on those conversations that occur. One thing to point out though is uh, in 2022, at the, in November, about a year ago, uh, Moody's changed their methodology to adjust the local government uh, ratios and changes based on what they believe are most pertinent to today's world. So Moody's provided and reviewed every credit that they they issued throughout the whole country and determined that there would review secondarily. If Wait, there was there would be if there be any additional. Mr. Dog, would you please wake up? Would you please stop that? We're not going to have meeting on it, please. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, Moody's did review everyone a, a second time, despite the uh, traditional surveillance in, in, in 2022, based on that change in methodology. Uh, there was no change needed for for the county at that time. Uh, we expect to probably have a, a surveillance call in the coming months as well. I just want to point out a couple of uh, numbers. I know these are uh, just listed for the county just to give you an idea of where you compare in, in certain areas. Uh, if you look at the yellow, green, blue, and red, those are the main methodologies that they consider are most important when reviewing uh, credit readiness, and that's the economy, financial performance, institutional framework, which is essentially just Pennsylvania local governments, and then leverage, which counts with both debt and liquidity and, uh, and other things that are tied to this. So the county's numbers from 2021, which is the most recent information that, that Moody's has, or at least listed at the time in the database, um, is, is, is listed on the right-hand side, and you can compare each of those with the range that you fall in. So not every county is straight AA2 all the way through. They have different ranges, and they take all that information, put it all together, and that's how they determine through the credit process. So you may have some that are a little higher than the, the AA category, and some you may have below. But again, that overall range is what drives uh, the, the credit readiness. Uh, in each of those uh, cases, I think they're, they're all in good positions, and uh, you know, we, we hope to maintain those things over the course of time. It's safe to say every county is different, correct? That is definitely true, yeah. Obviously, you know, we, the Pennsylvania, uh, both on the eastern part of the state and the western part of the state, I think are completely different on how they do things as well as their demographics. Uh, that you know, the suburban Philadelphia area has a different uh, view versus the northern part of the state. But when Moody's looks at things, they have to look at it as a big picture. Not just Pennsylvania; they are actually looking at the national uh, double A or single A category, and that's what the comparisons are. So, some of these charts that we're talking about here, we're comparing what are called double A two medians. So you can see these little graphs that are that I'm going to touch on briefly. Uh, these are the comparisons of every double A two nationally not just Pennsylvania. And for anyone that knows local government world uh, throughout the country, Pennsylvania is somewhat unique in the sense that we have many smaller local governments. Frankly, I think the largest percentage of local governments 
is located in Pennsylvania versus the whole national amount. So I think there's 10,000 or something like that. Most of them are actually in Pennsylvania. Other states are just large entities. So we are comparing some of those versus some of the others that fall in this AA category. So that data comes all together, gives you the historical averages. So just pointing out a, a few of those, uh, those ratios, uh, one thing that's important here is you know, stability is important here, and that's one of the things that we, we like to see. Uh, you know, in some cases, there's been you know, some you know, monitor increases or, or increases over the last uh, three or four years, but you can see uh, the, the driven uh, averages that are, that are tied to the uh, brown box, which is Schuylkill County, and then the medians, which is the, uh, the, the blue line. So you can see those ranges uh, in percentages as those ratios are calculated. So again, this is just one big math problem. Don't want to bore everyone on, on the calculations, but these are, are important to point out. These are the type of things that Moody's an independent company reviews to make sure that we're falling in line with the categories that they're looking for. I won't go much farther than this. Again, uh, very, very steady is really debt, adjusted debt pensions, population. Again, all very, very normal status falling under the AA category. Again, important points here. Just wanted to really just generally provide everyone an idea of really what the process that we go through it is something that happens. We are constantly on the phone and comparing and adjusting and making sure that we're doing things correctly. And when we communicate these things uh, to the rating agency, they understand what's going on over, over the year as well as uh, through their independent review. So I'll stop. I appreciate the time. And thanks. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you to Paul and the uh, administration team. But also, thank you to all the employees, because we have a lot of employees, row officers here, that all have come together to do a very positive thing on behalf of the county. So thank you so much for giving us that review. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, before we go ahead, I think took notes here. I think Jenna Fair is here. From, sorry, Jenna St. Clair, sorry, Jenna, from our conservation district, and she has a new employee with her today. Do you want to introduce us to get gentlemen here? <laughs> Sure. Um, this is Chelsea Brown, our new uh, program coordinator at Conservation District. Morning, Kelsey. Welcome to the team. So, thank you. Thanks for coming to our presentation today. Uh, okay, next up we have County Administrator. Uh, the first time is approval requested to ratify Disney Group contract for the month of September 2023. Is there a motion to approve these contracts? So moved. Second. On the question. On the question. Uh, again, I just want to go back to. Uh, what we had discussed last month uh, that, and, and, and Mr. Bender, these are items that have been paid already. This is just the contract as me approval of items that you have already paid. Correct. The board approved these uh, parcels to be included in the, pro in the program. We, uh, as a result, that there was a survey and now a placement. Okay. And the only point that I make, you know. Uh, we have to pay the bills that we have. However, uh, it, my concern I have is that one of the parcels uh, is uh, you know, for the chair of the board of commissioners. And even though we have to pay the bill, I'm concerned about it from an ethics standpoint. That is true, and that was addressed prior at, uh, when they were both approved on the menu. So this is just an extension of that, that program. Right, thank you. That was a question that I asked uh, Solicitor Dottie uh, when that uh, issue came up at first uh, a number of months ago. Uh, does this present as a conflict? And actually this is, he said, no, it, it did not because it's only looking at the approval if he can enter the program. And that's what the survey and the appraisal was. Am I correct on that? Yes, right, that is correct. I just want to get clear on that. Okay. Right, that is correct. Okay. Any other questions? Jenna, would you want to make any more maybe comments or not? Absolutely. Uh, again, I'm Jenna St. Clair. Welcome on down. What's that? Good morning. <laughs> uh, I'm Jenna St. Clair, I'm the district manager of the Schuylkill Conservation District. Um, we administer the county's farmland preservation program. Um, that is administered through its own board um, as a, a separate board of directors. Um, so I want to make some clarifying comments about these the contracts for the appraisal. Um, 
of those, like uh, Commissioner Hess had pointed out, the survey and appraisal are done in order to see that a farm is um, eligible to enter into the program. Um, all of those costs, though paid for by the county up front, are reimbursed by the state um, through the state's farm and preservation program. Um, in addition, the easement that would be for the head of the farm is also going to be paid for by entirely state funding. Um, so I wanted to, to clarify how that program works um, and what funding would be going towards. Thank you. So, yeah. Jed, Jed, so what you're saying to me is that state funding is involved, and that, but who appoints the farmland preservation board, the ag preservation board, the county commissioners do. So, again, that's where I believe that there's uh, concern that I have. So, but that's my concern. Um, the farms that are selected for easement. Um, also, that's done through um, an established ranking criteria. Um, the largest portion of that ranking depends on the soil that's present in the farm um, and other uh, factors like that. So um, we do those rankings annually on every farm that applies, um, and then obviously the ones that, that go to the top are the ones that are then eligible um, to go easement with the state. And my only comment back on that is that, uh, you yeah. know, Again, I've always supported farmland preservation. Uh, we went from zero money going to farmland preservation to when I came on in 2012 of funding farmland preservation. Uh, this past year, we increased funding to farmland preservation uh, by close to $200,000, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and uh, even though I approved of the farmland preservation for those other uh, uh, farms that were eligible, all I asked was the chair to step aside uh, and go on a wait list until that time where uh, he was not in position. So, and to allow another farm to be able to get those numbers. So that was my concern. Uh, it's nothing against the farmland preservation program. I think it's an excellent program <coughs> and we have funded that accordingly. So thank you. For the record, Jen, I'd like to comment. The, these five farms that were, are including my farm, the Murray farm, are being done with federal money, federal money and state money. Yeah. And by allowing us to be in that position, we, we, will, we will actually garner in some extra additional federal money. Yeah, so we've adopted to start entering into federal easements as well. Um, that has additional restrictions on that, the, those properties um, that are under those easements. Um, and then 50% of uh, the funding that goes into that will come back to us in the following year. So that was a decision made by the Preservation Board to um, put priority on easements that were willing to, to do that federal program in order to continue to leverage more money back into um, the county program. And once again, no county money is going into Preserve My Farm. No. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions or comments from her? Well, I just uh, one question. Is this the first appraisal that was done on that farm, or is this the second appraisal? This is, a, this is additional. This is um, an additional appraisal because that farm would not have been eligible for the federal program unless. No. Okay. No. No. Okay. So um, the Heatherington tract and the other one that is uh, that Weary. is out. So which Weary tract? Um, uh, an initial appraisal was done, but again, in order to be in that federal program. Um, the appraisal has to be done to the standards of that program, so an additional um, appraisal had to be done. So, did the appraisal go up at all? I'm not sure what the initial initial one was. Okay, I um, my understanding is that the appraisal went up. So that's again nothing to do with that. We have a motion. I appreciate the information you presented, Jenna, and I know we have a motion on board. So thank you. Once again, that's saying it. it's not a new appraisal; it's an enhanced appraisal. Yeah. Which will be required by the, by, the, by the USDA. Any other questions or comments? Just, I just want to clarify again, Mr. Solicitor, that if Mr. Huntington votes on this, it's not in conflict, correct? Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We have a, how many that, uh, do we have a? We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Okay, and the question roll call. 
Commissioner Hetherington? Yes. Commissioner Alcovich? Yes. And Commissioner Hess? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Gary, you want to read the next one, please? Certainly. Uh, the approval that the school county board of commissioners strongly object to the continued operation of the natural soil products company municipal biosolids composting facility in Fairley Township until the Gore biosolids <coughs> uh, composting is mandated by the consent decree, consent order and agreement of May 25th, 2023 with the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection is operational and proven to be effective in eliminating the existing odor issue and that the board notify the Department of its position, and that the board urged that the department is to strictly enforce all laws and regulations and permits governing the conduct of municipal biosolids processing within the Commonwealth to prevent malodors from leaving the facility premises, and further request that the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania to adopt such a policy resolution directed to the Department of Environmental Protection. Requesting a motion at this time. Okay, is there a uh, motion for this? So moved. Second. On a question, roll call. Commissioner Hetherington? Yes. Commissioner Halcovich? Yes. And Commissioner Hess? Yes. I'd like to follow up that letters to DEP and the County Business Association of Pennsylvania will be <coughs> drafted by our, our office and uh, signed with the Mr. Zincent. Next is the Human Resources. Good morning, Tony. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, three items. Uh, first one, uh, appointment in Human Resources of Jennifer Keatsock as an Office Support Secretarial at the rate of 14.2805, effective 10 23 Also, in Human Resources transfer of Carol Federoff uh, to an Office Support Secretarial position at a rate of 14.2805, effective 11 23 coming from Aging Care Manager 2. And in the Solicitor's Office, the transfer of David Rice to assistant county solicitor at a rate of 75,000, effective 12-1-23, coming from law clerk and court administration. Okay, so all of these appointments are pending drug test and physical where appropriate, and all actions involving salary uh, or for positions being created are pending salary board approval. <coughs> okay, so under human resources is an appointment of Jennifer Keatsock as the office support secretarial and our rate of 14.28, 05, effective October 30th, 2023, and also a transfer of Carol Federoff to Office Support Secretarial, also at the rate of 14.2805. That will be uh, effective November 13th, 2023. The Solicitor's Office transfer of David Rice from the uh, law clerk in the courts to the OPR assistant, county solicitor, Annual size seventy five thousand dollars. That will be incurred uh, December first, twenty twenty three. Motion for these. We're only doing the first one under motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Once again, human resources, two transfers, an appointment, uh, effective tenth uh, uh, October thirtieth, and also uh, November thirteenth. Is there a motion for those two? Uh, again, it's just the first one that we're doing. Well, the line. Yeah, we're not doing the second one. Oh, I'll make a motion for the human resources appointment of Jennifer Keatsock, Office Support Secretarial, effective October 30, 2023. Second. On a question, roll call. Commissioner Hetherington? Yes. Commissioner Halkovich? Yes. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Okay. Tony, I think you also have a, another. Yeah. I do. I have several other items. Uh, approval of a contract with a company called Crossing Crown in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania for a period of three months from November 9 to February 9, 2024. The three-month extension, the contract is for recruitment, branding, advertisement, and website services. There's a one-time cost of $6,500, $2,000 free recruitment video package, and monthly management cost of $2,775. Uh, I also have uh, approval of a three-year renewal of the Benistar Retiree Prescription Drug Plan number 2197. Monthly premium for Plan 2197 will increase from 280.60 to 303.10 per person for the period January 1, 24 through December 31, 26. This relates to a 4.3% increase for Plan Year 24 and a 0% increase for Plan Years 25 and 26. Also, approval of the three-year renewal of the Benistar Retiree Prescription Drug Plan 6591. 
monthly premium for plan 6591 will increase from 198.27 to 206.80 per person for the period January 1, 24 through December 31, 2026. This relates to a 4.3% increase for plan year 24 and a 0% increase for plan years 25 and 26. Also approval to renew the agreement with Benecon Group to serve as the administrator of the county's health reimbursement account plan at a monthly premium of $4 per employee, split between Benecon, the county, and the broker as follows. Benecon, $1.84 per employee per month. The county, $1.36 per employee per month. And the broker, $0.80 cents per employee per month. That's effective January 1, 24 for a 12 month period unless terminated by written notice to the other parties with a 60, uh, 60 days in advance. And also approval to renew the agreement with One America uh, for Life, Accidental Death and Dismemberment, AD&D, and Long-Term Disability, LTD, insurance coverages for eligible county employees for the period January 1, 24 through December 31, 25, life at 0.178 or $1,000 of coverage. That's a 3% decrease from 0.185 per $1,000 of coverage. AD&D is 0 0.02 per $1,000 of coverage. That's flat from last year. LTD is 0.3 per $100 or monthly covered payroll. Uh, that's a 16.7 decrease from uh, 0.35 per 100. Thank you, Tony. Is that a business or Tony, Tony, I, I just, just one question on the uh, crossing crown. I, I know and I appreciate the fact that you're looking at it till February 9th. Have they looked at if the program is working to extend that out? Have they locked it, giving you an idea of what it would cost for an annual period of time? I know right now you're just dealing 90 days and maybe with what they're doing, you can actually do this internally after this is put together. Is that a fair statement? Uh, yes, sir, I believe the monthly cost would stay the same and it would depend on whether or not you're asking for additional video work. Correct, thank you. Any questions for Tony? Mr. Hess, you have a, uh, let's start, go ahead. Do uh, you have a comment on this? No, not that. Uh, I just want to formally welcome Tony Newman to the administrative staff at the commissioner's office. Uh, Tony joined us here. Both Linda and I feel that she brings a, an excellent skill set to the office, and we certainly look forward to working with her uh, here in, the, in the, the next while. Yeah, I welcome Connie. I know Linda's been shouldering a lot of this burden for the last how many months, Linda? Since this week? Years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's been a relief to you have a second person to work with in the, yes. in the administration. So. We've yeah. had Mary Beth here also. Oh, yeah, she's back as, as a part time. But she's taking on some additional responsibility. Right. Right. It's good. It's a good team. I think we're going to do well. So, uh, any other questions, uh, Mr. Hesch? Yes, I'd, I'd like to make a statement and also a request at the end of my statement. Actually, you know, a number of years, uh, not about a year or so ago, uh, the county entered into a consent de decree, and actually, the county has been working very, very hard to uh, follow that consent decree. That uh, into so we don't get into further litigation that the county is already in. Uh, it has come to our attention that again, the Commissioner Alcovich, you are aware of what's in the consent decree and what uh, we're actually requesting under the consent decree, especially in the hours of that uh, you are here in the building from eight to five, which is in the consent decree. Over those times, uh, numerous times, uh, you have stayed uh, inside the building well past those amount of hours. Uh, all we're asking is so that the uh, the county stays in conform with the consent decree, that we don't further get into litigation, is that we're asking you to conform to them hours, if you would please. Uh, also a letter I know uh, from Administrator Bender was sent to you, and again the, the, the letter that also was, uh, that came from, and it was addressed to myself and also Commissioner Hetherington, uh, from the sheriff's office on the amount of times uh, that you were past those hours. All we're asking is that so we don't go into further litigation that you would hold yourself to those hours. Uh, if not, then we'd have to actually look at some other alternatives to, to do some things in the thing. All we're doing is ask if you can be agreeable to that. And that's why the reason since 
it's been so many times is why it was brought out not in public, that it has to be addressed here. So that, and I want to make sure that this is on the record, that the accounting has tried uh, to do this to make Commissioner Halkovich aware of those uh, allegations that the, the police to conform to it. So at least it leaves the county uh, out of that side that we've been trying to do everything that we can possible uh, to what's in that consent decree with the Department of Justice. Thank you. And uh, I'll respond to that. Uh, first of all, are you going to take make a formal motion of that? Because uh, that is actually taking away my rights as a county commissioner. And I, 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 if I may finish, Mr. Go ahead. Go ahead. If I may finish, uh, that uh, the consent decree is with the county. I voted no. I disagreed with what was in the consent decree. Uh, the, not everything in the consent decree, but uh, restrictions. I perform my work as a county commissioner, and uh, you know, all I was asking for are the same uh, restrictions that you would have being in the courthouse be the same that I would have as a sitting county commissioner. And when you say extensive time, I have never been in the courthouse after six o'clock, in fact, the times I've been in the courthouse is because there have been other employees in the commissioner's office that have been in the office with me. As they leave, I leave as well. And uh, so uh, if you want to take make a formal motion about that, and I did ask uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bender about the letter that was sent to me, and uh, that letter was authorized by uh, you and Commissioner Hetherington and my understanding the solicitor's office uh, for him to handle uh, versus you handle it. But uh, again, uh, if you feel you need to make a formal motion of that, uh, I continue as a county commissioner, as a sitting county commissioner, and uh, the uh, Unless you are, you know, giving other rights to other people in this office that should be in the commissioner's office, you know, uh, you handle as you see a court. You, you have me lost on, on that as yeah, over the last verbiage. Good. First of all, and on the, the, the consent decree, I want to claim that it did come before this board, and the vote was taken by a majority of this board to agree with the consent decree and to do whatever actions that we can possibly do. That's all I'm asking, and that's all it was. I'm not instructing anything else. All I said a request, just a, a pleasantly request, Commissioner. And it basically, that's all I'm asking. And it basically stated that the items in the consent decree had to be lawful. To restrict me would be is a not lawful. Is a request lawful? You're a predator. All I'm doing is- It's not the police. All I'm doing is making the request, and that's what I did. So that, thank, thank you. you. I just wanted to make sure that's of record, so that if the Department of Justice comes back, and again, to show that we as a county has done everything we can to conform to that, what we can possibly do. That's all I wanted to clear up. That's it. Thank you. I agree, Mr. Hess. There was no formal motion needs to be done because it was brought up to the board and by a majority of vote, the commission accepted. And Three years ago, we sat in this was office, Mr. Halkovich, you promised us you would be here between eight and five o'clock. You voluntarily promised that. I can't prove. Uh, it's not written down, but I have witnesses that can. I, 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 I agree to when an attorney general's investigation was being done. You agree? And, and Mr. Hetherington, I will respectfully disagree with you that once that, agree, once that review was done, that was what I had asked for. It was just the same thing that I did as far as stepping down from the chair. And uh, the agreement that you had made was that, you know, I should go back as chair after that review of the attorney general was done. As you well know, you disagreed to do that. So thank you so much. What is that? I never agreed to that charge. <laughs> yes, you did. Huh? You promised us you, we, you would stay only between eight and five. I, well, I'll just let me finish now, okay? You always talk over top of me, okay? How about, how about you get in order, okay? 
Well, I even need to care. Okay. You done? You promised us there were no stipulations on the back of it. Okay, and I, I never promised to step down as chairman. Until it, this was, had to be done until this investigation was over. This investigation is still going on. There's still a lawsuit. There's still a civil trial. It's still active. Okay, no, nothing changed. Okay, so you made that promise to us as a group, and you now won't keep it. And that's I, I find it very troubling. So, so every civil trial, people should be excluded from this uh, location. Is what your point is? I'll make a motion to adjourn on that. We on the salary board. I we didn't get. Okay, it's fine. If we don't ever That's fine. We don't fine. My apologies. Yeah, don't ever yeah. My apologies. Can I run the meeting, George, please? Can we play some circus music here? Mr. Duff, one more time.